So when we talk about supply chain risks or also supply chain reliability, there are some questions that typically arise there. So one of the questions being, so is actually my supplier still reliable or should I look for alternatives? Should I look into second sourcing strategies or something, something else here? Other questions that are typically arriving here very soon is, will I actually get at my supplies on time and will I get them in the sufficient quantities that I ordered them? So this actually being one of the key questions in supply chains. Nowadays, further questions arise like, so what about end-tier reliability? So how safe are actually my supplier's supplier? Other questions are then uh, during the transport, especially in let's say multimodal transport, are there any external events like weather situation, traffic situation that may affect my supplies on the transport way? When we now talk about the topic of supply chain risk management and what we call the traditional uh, thought of risk management, then we often see that uh, there's a too narrow view on the topic of risk management. Because risk management as a discipline is often focused on one or a few weak spots in the entire process chain here. So we're either just looking into external or more environmental issues affecting supplier locations or transport lanes, or more on the sourcing side, we just look at the financial situation of suppliers or just the transports themselves. Often in combination with that supply chain processes are considered more or less a black box, and we don't look into the inherent process problems within the supply chain. These are often overlooked and we have a lack of visibility in there. So we may, for example, not see process collaboration not being efficient enough, or we get alerts from our supply chain processes just after the problem has already happened. So no time anymore to intervene and do any avoiding measures here. This happens partially because also traditional risk management is often, uh, let's say, treated or set up entirely decoupled from your operational supply chain processes. This means you establish another solution to get risk information about your supply chain. But the question is, if it's not directly linked into your supply chain processes and your supply chain systems, how do you deal with data consistency? How do you deal with changes to your supplier networks, for example? And more importantly also, what is the relevancy of an event? So it's good to know where this happens and when it happens, but what is the effect on my material? What can I tell my material planners in terms of how they are affected? Which material will be missing? Where will I have supply issues and production issues ultimately? And also how to keep your operational processes and your risk management systems in sync with, with each other regarding setup data, master data, transport lanes, supplier locations. All of this is a big issue in those traditional risk management efforts. The supplier approach really believes that the combination has to be hand in hand. So risk management has to go hand in hand with supply chain management. So visualizing uh, risk information, highlighting uh, critical information is part of the operational processes and is just an add-on more or less to SCM processes here to really make more or less the information most valuable for the key stakeholders here, which are, for example, disponents or material planners. That's why when we talk about risk management, we consider that it has to be set up really as a holistic discipline, as a holistic approach, but we need to target the different angles of risk management. So we need to look into the supplier themselves. We need to look into the logistic processes where we exchange information and collaborate with our suppliers. And we also need to look into external events affecting our supply chain processes. So really a comprehensive risk management strategy must address the entire big picture here. And we need to sort them out piece by piece. 